Okay, it's Friday, so let us finish Muth with some just refresh. I, I hope that next hour will be really, I mean, boring for all of you because you already know by heart what I'm going to show you, okay? To refresh you because you are supposed to uh, having done uh, all those concepts. Okay, surprisingly, in robotics, uh, but also in, uh, in dynamic uh, uh, systems, in linear dynamic systems, uh, <coughs> systems of linear equations, they do arise uh, in various parts of our world problems. So let us make a very short refresh of uh, the way we can solve them. It's not, it's not uh, difficult to understand It's not difficult to understand that we are going to review a little bit uh, system of linear equations because this is a system of linear equations. Instantaneously, it is a system of linear equations. The matrix uh, of the coefficients change uh, with the configuration. We can solve it at each step in time. But this is a system of linear equations. So let us a little bit review. We do have uh, n unknown and m equations, linear equations. I have a linear combination with, of real numbers of the unknowns equal some known terms. We can face three possibilities. The number of unknowns is equal to the number of equations. The matrix A, assuming it is full rank, can be inverted, and we simply have x is equal inverse of A multiplied y. As usual, I try to have uh, a graphical interpretation of the results because I think it, it helps a lot in understanding the concept. <coughs> the graphical representation is possible with, uh, it's easy, with two equations. Uh, and two unknowns. If I have two equations and two unknowns, this is my situation with some numbers. Well, 15x1 plus 10x2 equal 113 is the equation of a line. Okay. Okay. I can draw this line. <coughs> and the second uh, as well. So the operation of find the unknown is graphically the operation of finding the same point that belongs to the two lines. And saying that uh, the matrix uh, should have uh, full rank means that the two lines are not parallel one each other. The intersection exists and only have one point. And so this is the results. The, the red arrow point the results. Okay, this is the easy way that almost all of you have done in calculus. Then not all of you usually have studied the other two possibilities. Let us just refresh, but I mean, you need to eventually, uh, eventually, I mean, find some notes uh, to, to, to study them. If I have uh, a number of uh, equations that is larger than a number of unknowns, I do not have a solution. This is a very interesting problem because historically, this was the first uh, uh, approach in the 19th century when you had uh, several measurements in, ast in astronomy especially, and of course you didn't have one single solution due to the measurement errors. What to do? In uh, calculus or in a higher school, uh, what the teacher usually say is just to forget the uh, additional equations and just to use the number of equations so that your problem is square. But this is okay for a mathematic point of view, but it's totally wrong from the engineering aspect. Because when we do have uh, more equations that are knowns, 
usually this is uh, an added value because, for example, we have uh, a lot of measurements. And what we could do? Well, we can uh, formulate uh, a minimization problem. And in particular, we want to minimize the reconstruction error. So we want to minimize the norm of uh, y minus uh, ax, where x uh, is uh, uh, the minimum point. So this is uh, the square norm. Okay? It can be demonstrated, of course we are not going to do it, that the solution is a left pseudo inverse. Okay? The symbol here is a, a dag. So x is equal dag y. And from the operative aspect, you just have to compute the inverse of a transpose a, multiplied a transpose, multiply y. And again, the graphical interpretation is very useful. This is the graphical interpretation. We have several lines, okay, more than uh, more than expected because the intersection of those lines is not in one point. We are going to make, as I said, measurement. And uh, what I do is I say, okay, but those lines should more or less have a point that minimizes the, dis the distance from all of them, okay? And this is exactly what is done here with those numbers. This is, this is just the computation of uh, the pseudo inverse of matrix A. We will not meet this problem, this uh, situation, because trying to control a number of velocity component that is smaller than number of joints uh, is somehow a stupid operation. We just don't use the line of the Jacobian if you don't have the mobility. For a planar robot, we just use the first two, X and Y. But the, the third line of the Jacobian is zero, zero, zero for, uh, because it represents the, the linear velocity going out from the plane where the robot is. Okay, we don't use it at all, of course. This is the situation that uh, we will meet in robotics. The situation where we do have uh, more unknowns than equation. It means that we do have uh, infinite solution. And if, if we have infinite solution, uh, well, each of the solution is a solution, so it's okay. Let us pretend something, pretend more. We do pretend, for example, to find the solution with minimum norm. Why? Well, in our case, so we have infinite solution, it means that uh, we have uh, infinite joint velocities. And for obvious energetic and engineering reason, it's better if you keep the norm of the velocity as small as possible. So this, it, it does have sense to minimize the norm of the solution. Uh, subject to Ax equal y, of course, that now is a constraint for us. Otherwise, it, the solution is zero. And well, we <coughs> come out with uh, a right pseudo inverse. A transpose, A, a transpose uh, inverse, Y. There is no ambiguity between right and left pseudo inverse, and the symbol is the same in mathematics. Okay, there is not ambiguity. When you have uh, um, when you have, uh, uh, you cannot have an uh, ambiguous representation in mathematics. The reason why you don't write A divided B with A and B matrices is because matrix multiplication is not commutative. This would be an ambiguous representation of this operation. Okay. Now, we are using the same symbol. This is not an ambiguity. Because this operation here cannot be done if you have more equations that are known. Okay. Then, 
mnemonically, right third inverse, you have the inverse at the right and A transpose at the left. Uh, left third inverse, you have the inverse at the left and this at right. Okay, just to memorize. Okay, but I have uh, uh, infinite possibilities. So I can write a generic solution as the sum of the minimal norm solution plus, uh, well, plus uh, an arbitrary vector that is projected in this strange matrix. We will see next lessons. This is a null space projector. This is not affecting the solution, but it's very useful in robotics. Now, it's just a generic expression, but we will work with this, okay? In your project, we will have the need to work with uh, this strange uh, object, with strange projector. Well, the graphical representation for one equation and two unknowns, well, one equation and two unknowns is a line. And every single point of the line is a solution. Then the minimum norm is the red here, and all the others may eventually be achieved by resorting to this additional term. So if I have uh, some reasons to add uh, this term, I will come up with some, uh, yeah. with some other of those for some reasons. We will see. Okay? And this is just a recap in one single slide uh, of, uh, of uh, AX equal Y. The solution is always x equal a inverse y or a pseudo inverse. There is not ambiguity. It's the same. The solution is the same. The implementation is different and the meaning is different. Okay? Now, pay attention. MATLAB is a software that with the aim to help you sometimes increase your confusion. For example, in this case, you have to write simply those five bytes to implement all the three situations. And MATLAB takes care of all, which is not always a good thing. Okay? Because very often, the kind of errors that uh, you do, but not only you, I mean, the, we do when we work in MATLAB, they are not syntax errors. The syntax errors are very easy to find because the, 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 the program stop, okay? <laughs> and there is just a red line. You cannot go over than here because you are asking a division by zero. The problem are the semantic errors where the syntax is correct but the meaning is not what you expected, okay? For example, sinus of a matrix in mathematics, it does, it does not exist, okay? In MATLAB, yes. So if you are just typing by mistake uh, uppercase A instead of lowercase A, and for you lowercase A has a meaning, uppercase A is another variable, is a matrix one, well, MATLAB gives you something here, okay? It does not stop here. So we should uh, always uh, know what we are asking to the software. Help is the first thing to do when we use a command. Okay. How many of you have seen a singular value decomposition in uh, their career? Or in a linear algebra? Okay. Mechanical engineering? Yes? No? No. Good? Let's see if you did Non lo sapete se l'avete visto o no? Eh? Ve lo dico io, non l'avete visto. Io lo so. Allora, 
the singular value decomposition uh, is an instrument uh, that uh, is very useful uh, for um, to understand uh, numerical properties of a matrix okay nowadays is not anymore difficult to compute numerically SVD for uh, reasonable uh, dimension matrix. It was very time consuming, you know, 30 years ago. So in the beginning of the robotics, uh, SVD was not used within control loop because it was too slow. Today you can use it. You can use it uh, in a high frequency control loop. Okay, because of course, I mean, uh, electronics made some uh, progress in the last, in the last years. If I have a matrix, not necessarily a square matrix, it's a rectangular matrix, uh, the singular value decomposition is a factorization. I do separate three components of uh, this matrix. And, uh, it's given by U multiplied sigma multiplied V transpose, where U is a square matrix of dimension M is an orthonormal basis for Rm. V is an orthonormal base for Rn. So U and V, they do have different dimensions. And sigma is a, a rectangular matrix. In the diagonal, it holds some very important numbers, the singular values of the matrix M. The singular values from the definition are Okay, the square roots of the game values of M transpose M. Okay, forget it. Let's see a decomposition. This is sigma when you do have uh, M larger than N, and this is sigma when you do have uh, M smaller than N. So you have uh, a matrix plenty of zero with those uh, singular value here on this diagonal and uh, here on this diagonal, okay? There is not uh, a, uh, a rule. You can arrange uh, the singular values the way you want. But I think 99.99% uh, .99 of the software that you're using, they give you the singular values uh, in decreasing order. Okay? I'm not sure it's, uh, it's uh, a, a rule, but it's almost a universal approach. Just from Wikipedia, again, a visual interpretation of the singular value decomposition. As usual, it's always, uh, I, I, I think it's always good. This is M, four by three. This is U, four by four. And the columns are the unit vector that span the, uh, e, the codominium of M. This is V, V is transpose. So now I have, uh, uh, the unit vectors as rows. And this is sigma, all zero except uh, the three singular values. Uh, what does it mean orthonormal? U and V are orthonormal. What does it mean? U, U transpose is equal to the identity matrix of dimension M. V, V transpose is equal to the identity matrix of dimension N, okay? Okay, in MATLAB, uh, if I just define a random matrix three by two and I ask for the SVD, this is M. I just copied the number came out from uh, MATLAB. This is U, S, you can see the structure. This is V, so U is three by three, V is two by two, and column and unit vectors. Those are the singular values. And then I can uh, just have uh, a simple example here to try to understand uh, a little bit the meaning of uh, the unit uh, vectors of uh, V and U. Uh, not going to the details. If you, if, I mean, try to understand this, okay? Here I'm multiplying the matrix M by one of, uh, by the first uh, uh, column of V. And the result is the same as uh, picking up the first eigenvalue and multiplying by U, only U. 
try to understand uh, if you understand this one because this is just an example, a numerical example to see if, uh, if you understood the, the singular value. So why are we interested in singular values? Well, the composition. If I have uh, a certain matrix, one way to compute the Poussin inverse uh, is to have uh, V, Poussin inverse of sigma, U transpose. Well, U and V, orthonormal, very easily, I just, you know, transpose them and reverse the order. Now, sigma transpose is very easy. It's this one. I just wrote the, the case for, uh, that interests us, so uh, number of equations smaller than the number of uh, unknowns. It's very easy because each singular value appears as the inverse of the corresponding singular value. It is very, very significant because now I do understand something. If I have uh, those numbers in decreasing order, it means that uh, the smaller one is this one and the larger one is sigma one, okay? One divided the sigma one should be a small number, let me say. And this one can eventually be a very large number if the minimal, if the singular value is very small. But a singular value very small means that my matrix is close to be singular. If it is zero, it's singular. If it's almost zero, is close to be singular. Then I, I see clearly, I touch with my hands the fact that if my matrix is singular or close to be singular, I'm experiencing a division by zero issue. Okay? <coughs> and you don't want to have a division by zero in your control loop. For obvious reason. You ask for infinite power to your model. A matrix of the numerical balance of your matrix, matrix in sense of measurement of the numerical balance of your matrix, is the condition number, the ratio between the maximum and minimum singular value. If you have one, it means that all the singular values are the same, and numerically your matrix is wonderful. But <coughs> it goes from one to infinity. Okay? Okay, the last part mm -hmm. concern quadratic forms. How many of you saw some quadratic forms, some nice plot in uh, their career? Okay, none of you, but it's very easy, conceptually it's very easy. Mm -hmm. From the control aspect, uh, we will see that uh, we will work with the uh, object similar to this one, function as this one. So let us consider a generic is a function from Rn to R. Now let us assume uh, A symmetric. <coughs> this object here is the way that we define the, <coughs> we extend the concept of positive and negative from uh, scalar to matrices. You, we cannot, you, you know, we cannot say that A larger than B. 
it doesn't have uh, any sense. There is not a relational order in matrices. Because you can have, uh, a number can be either positive or negative. A matrix can be positive definite, we will see, negative definite, or neither positive or negative definite. Okay? Let us see the definition of a positive definite matrix. And the symbol is a larger than this is an upper this is a, an uppercase bold face O. It's not a zero. It doesn't have any sense to write to write a, a matrix A larger than zero. Okay, so this is a symbol. This matrix is positive definite if x transpose a x is larger than zero now this is zero if you look at the slide you can see clearly that the symbol are different here for every x different from now this is lower case bold face zero because this is a vector okay so if you if you, we keep out the trivial case where x is equal zero the matrix is positive definite if x transpose a x is larger than zero is positive semi-definite if is larger or equal, okay, larger or equal, and then uh, is negative definite is minus a is positive and so on. Okay, this is the same definition. So why do we need to have uh, this new concept of a quadratic form? We will use it several times in this class. If I have x transpose x, what it represents on the vector x? We have already seen it. Yeah. Huh? Projection or the, the norm. Square norm. Okay? If I multiply this by a certain matrix, for example, 1, 0, 0, 2, this is uh, still is a kind of, of norm. Okay? This is a weighted norm by a certain matrix. Weight, it is a norm as long as uh, this is definite po positive definite. Okay? And we have seen this in linear system theory because in a Kalman filter, you have seen that uh, it's very useful to have here the covariance matrix, the inverse of the covariance matrix, in order to make a different way are, uh, um, among the, the estimation error components. Okay? So this function is a function that uh, represents a kind of norm, okay? weighted. In order to verify if a certain matrix is positive, definite, or not, there are some necessary sufficient conditions. For example, necessary but not sufficient is that diagonal elements are all positive. But then necessary and sufficient is the eigenvalues are all positive, or the main minors are positive, and so on. But positive, definite matrices are always invertible because they are a number larger than zero, so the, the similarity with the division by zero still arises. Okay, let us plot. It will be useful to understand uh, some control design if we are able to visualize those functions. Here I have uh, the plot of uh, x transpose a x on the plane I have x1 and x2 and the third axis here I have the value of x okay well with the, this matrix A with again values uh, positive so this is a positive definite matrix uh, I know that the properties of this matrix are the iso level curves are ellipse 
if I cut my draw at a certain level, I have ellipses. And this is a projection of one ellipsis on the, on the plane, okay? The main axes are parallel to the eigenvectors. So the, the eigenvectors of the matrix A represent the axis of the ellipse. And the semi-axis length are the square root of the inverse of the values. This is complex. Let, let, let's see the interpretation. My ellipse is a circle if the eigenvalues uh, are equal. As long as they start to be different, my ellipse uh, has uh, a eccentricity. Okay? So if uh, numerically they are very different one each other, I have a very stretched ellipse. For example, if you want to plot x transpose ax equal 1, so I cut my function uh, at the level uh, 1 uh, with the matrix A identity, so as if it were absent. Again, values are 1, 1, uh, and the ellipse is actually a circle. The two eigenvectors are parallel to x1 and x2, and this is the draw of, uh, well, x1 squared plus x2 squared equal 1 is the circle, okay? So this is the, the, a, a, a simple case of x transpose a x. Then if I just change uh, one element of a, and again values are 1, 2, what's going on is that uh, my, uh, my circle is now an, el an ellipse. And uh, the uh, semi-axis associated uh, with the larger eigenvalue is shorter than the other, okay? So if you look here, the second one is... Then the off-diagonal element are, well, correlating the variables uh, and as you see, a rotation of the axis. Okay? You just a draw. This is just a draw to visualize what is x transpose ax. That will be used to design a controller for a uh, robot. More than one controller. Okay. We stop here. Next time, we'll start talking about reverse, the differential kinematics, okay? Uh, next Monday, we will meet in uh, 2S4. Then, I will not be there for Wednesday and Friday. I will send uh, a, a, a communication to classroom. And uh, uh, man, the following morning, Monday, we will be here. Okay? Questions? I will, I will send uh, a...